Good afternoon, boys and girls. Uh, today for assembly, we're going to have the world's largest lesson. Let's have a think about that. It's bigger than your class. It's bigger than the auditorium. It's bigger than Cairo. The world's largest lesson. Let's have a look. So what would the world's largest lesson look like? So as I said, it's bigger than Cairo. It's bigger than Egypt. It's bigger than the Middle East, bigger than Africa. The world's largest lesson. And we're all part of it. So here's a stadium. It's bigger than 100,000 people in a stadium. Much bigger. But if we're part of it, what should it be about? If you were part of the world's largest lesson, what would you want it to be about? What should this lesson be about? Kindness? Gratitude? Mindfulness? These are all important things. Our IB learner profile, being resilient and reflective and these types of qualities is also important. It's something the world can come together about. Let's start by looking at the biggest global problems today. What are the biggest global problems today? Hi guys, do you have time for a few quick questions? I see you're having a lot of fun, but do you ever stop and think if what you do is sustainable? And do you know what sustainable development means? Sustainable development is to make the world a better place for everyone now without destroying the possibilities for the next generations. If you wonder if something is sustainable, you can ask yourself, can we do this over and over again forever? Sustainable development means that we need to keep three things in mind at once. Social progress, economic development, and climate and environment. First of all, we have to take care of our planet. We have many natural ecosystems that must be in balance in order for us to live here. The climate system is one of them. This system ensures that the temperature is correct and that the atmosphere emits exactly the right amount of solar energy. When we emit harmful greenhouse gases such as CO2, we clog the atmosphere. This changes the temperatures on Earth, which again affects our development. How we produce and use energy is incredibly important. Oil and coal are examples of energy we may run out of. Water, wind and sun, however, will always be here. Using the lasting sources of energy that renew themselves is good for the planet and can provide jobs for years to come. Economics Almost everything we develop, buy and trade starts with nature. The smarter we use our natural resources, and the better systems we create for a fair distribution, the more sustainable we are. One way to contribute to a more uneven distribution is to be more aware of what we buy and how it is produced. A football is a good example. It travels far before it reaches the football players. First, the materials are made. Then, they print the logo somewhere else before a third country sues it all together. One single football sees the whole world before it reaches its goal. This journey ties us together. If we are to win the battle for a sustainable future, we have to play with fair rules that applies to everyone. Social progress. We humans are part of nature, but we're also important resources for the world. Just like water, the forest, and the sun, we have minds that can create the strangest and most creative things but for us to be the best versions of ourselves, there are certain things that must be in order, like having equal opportunities to education, safety, food, and medicine. This provides greater opportunities for us as human beings, but also for the planet. We just have to think in new ways. These three must work together. That is sustainable development. And there is actually a plan for this. All the countries of the United Nations have agreed on a joint plan for sustainable development. But for the plan to work, we need to cooperate and we need you to be on board. Are you with us?
Okay, so as we saw on that video clip uh, that's provided by the United Nations, United Nations being 193 nations coming together and agreeing, we need to work together. We need to cooperate, we need to collaborate, um, and it's a global issue. So there is a joint plan and because one of the biggest problems today in the world is sustainable development. Um, and the world, the media, were dealing with it quite significantly before COVID, and COVID took some limelight. But as we've seen recently with COP26, which is the United Nations coming together to plan for climate change, um, it's back at the forefront of looking at how we survive with these three key areas of sustainable development the environment, okay, so as it says there, air, water, land, plants and animals. How do we look after them so that they can be used again and again and again and will always be there? The economy, so that people can survive and can live and can have money to um, have shelter and to have food and to be educated. And then society, so that we can be the best that we can be. We can be healthy and safe and have opportunities in education. So these three aspects are the three pillars as we concentrate on how we can be sustainable for the future. So an example they give here is a farm that pays workers fairly. So the workers get their money and it's money they can live off and supports a local community school, which looks after the society and education, but produces large amounts of greenhouse gases. They're the gases that cause uh, climate change and global warming in its farming process would not be sustainable. It can't keep going, keep going, keep going. Because it would be contributing to climate change in the environment, damaging the environment, which will undermine the other two elements in the long term. So as we develop and progress, governments, societies, nations need to consider the environment, the social aspects of society and the economy and money. And we'll look at a few of these examples. Now, you have dealt with this over the last two years as you look at sustainable development goals. What else are they known as sustainable development goals? Sustainable development goals, also known as global goals. And here we have, we have them around the school, one to 17. 17 is about partnerships and it, that acknowledges that the global goals are very complex and has many stakeholders, that is many different people involved, many stakeholders. So that's why 17 is there. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on goal seven, affordable and clean energy, which relates very much to that last video that we saw. Just a bit of background information. So that, as we can see, there's 17 goals and number 17 is partnerships for the goals. And these were adopted in 2015. Now, before this, in 2015, we had the Millennium Goals. And the Millennium Goals were a bit different. They were goals similar to these, but they were only designed for countries that were regarded as being developing. So not being often as um, wealthy as some nations not being as stable or as having as good an infrastructure. Whereas the global goals are for all nations and all 193 nations signed off on them. So they apply to all countries. Again, they range across the three pillars, economy, society, and the environment. Um, and as I said before, they acknowledge that they're very complex and these global issues are very complex, but they provide a framework that is inclusive 
equitable and sustainable. So we'll look at those words a little bit more. Sustainable, as we picked up in the video, means that it can be done over and over and over again. Now, an example of that is trees. If we had some trees and we cut down the trees in a forest, cut them all down and used the wood for timber. It was great. We had lots of timber. We could build houses, make bats and um, use it for firewood. But once that had been used up, it would take a long time for those trees to grow back. Sometimes hardwood trees can take well over 100 years to grow so that they can be cut down. So we would lose those trees. We can be. We must be. The first generation to end extreme poverty. The generation most determined to fight injustice and inequalities. The generation that saves the planet from climate change. And this is how it will get done. The global goals. A 15-year plan for everyone, everywhere. With no one left behind. We, we will live in a world where nobody anywhere lives in extreme poverty. Where no one goes hungry. Where no one wakes in the morning asking if there will be food today. We will live in a world where no child has a diet. For diseases we know how to cure. And where proper health care is a lifelong right for us all. We will live in a world where everyone goes to school. And education gives us the knowledge and skills for a fulfilling life. We will live in a world where all girls and all women have equal opportunities to thrive and be powerful and safe. We cannot succeed if half the world is held back. We will live in a world where all people can get clean water and proper toilets at home, at school, and at work. We will live in a world where there is sustainable energy for everyone. Heat, light, and power for the whole planet. Without destroying the planet. We will live in a world where economies prosper. A new wealth leads to decent jobs for everyone. And we will live in a world where our industry our infrastructure and our best innovations are not just used to make money, but to all make all our, our lives better. better. We will live in a world where prejudices and extremes of inequality are defeated. Inside our countries and between different countries. Where people live in cities and communities that are safe and progressive and support everyone who lives there. Where we replace what we consume. Planet where we put back what we take out of the earth. We live in a world that is decisively rolling back the threat of climate, climate change. change. Where we restore and protect the, the life in our, our oceans, oceans and seas. We <laughs> restore and protect life on land. The forests, animals, the earth itself. With peace between and inside countries. Where all governments are open. And answer to us for what they do at home and abroad. And the justice rules. With everyone equal before the law. Where all countries and we their people work together in partnerships of all kinds to make these global goals, goals a reality for everyone, everywhere. These are the United Nations global goals for sustainable development. Let's, Let's get, get to work. work. Let's make it happen.
So what does the word inclusive mean? We use it a lot, being inclusive, that these goals are about being inclusive. We need to include everyone. Okay, so it means that everyone belongs. Everyone belongs to this lesson. It's a global lesson. It's a huge lesson, the biggest lesson in the world. And everyone belongs, every nation, every person. What about equitable? If we're equitable, it means that everyone's treated equally. Okay, so it means in basic terms that it's fair. Reaching the goals, working together is done in a fair way. No nations are left behind. No nations are favoured. For example, when we look at coal, no nations are allowed to burn lots of coal. They would then be against other nations suffering also within the environment and climate, uh, global warming um, and climate change. Everyone has to be treated fairly and sustainable. Can we do this over and over again forever? And if the answer is no, then that's another problem that we have to solve. By using renewable forms of energy, uh, by replanting trees, by making sure we don't litter the beach with uh, plastic bags, we enable animals, plants, life to continue. So can we do this over and over again forever? So we're looking at goal seven of the global goals, affordable and clean energy. We must make sure everyone has access to clean, reliable energy, especially from renewable sources. I give the example of the sun, solar energy, geothermal heat, using the warmth and heat from the earth, water, using the movement of water to create electricity or energy, and wind, solar, uh, wind energy, um, and using turbine of the big wind turbines, the movement to create electricity and energy. We must work together to develop alternative energy technologies, promote energy efficiency and help countries expand their energy systems in a sustainable way so that we can do it over and over again. So we're talking a lot about the globe, the world, but how does this relate to us as children in BISC, as community members in BISC, all this global talk, these 17 goals that are for all nations, the United Nations, how does this relate to us? What can we do? We can talk about it, but how do we put it into action? Since the 1970s, massive new development projects have been set up around Cairo with the aim of reducing the strain on the capital city. In 1977, construction began on the 10th of Ramadan city. In 1979, on the opposite side of Cairo, the 6th of October city was built. Adjacent to it, in 1995, the Sheikh Zayed city as well as in the east, the cities of Abur, al Sharuk, Badr, and Medinity, as well as the largest such project to date, New Cairo, which construction began in the year 2000. These cities are not suburbs in the traditional sense, because the intention was not only to relieve Cairo of housing requirements, but rather to establish new separate metropolitan areas with their own local economy. In addition to large industrial complexes, these newer cities also host many internationally oriented schools and universities. The Greater Cairo area is growing at an enormous pace, and it seems that every new project exceeds the previously developed cities both in size and in ambition. Yet still, the project currently under development can hardly be surpassed in terms of ambition as the government is now creating a completely new capital, 
east of Cairo and New Cairo. Let's take a look at the plans for this city in detail. First of all, as a new capital, this administrative area was established, which will house all different ministries of the Egyptian government. These will move from their current spread out locations in Cairo to these ministry buildings which extend opposite one another along one central axis. Centrally located is the cabinet building in which the various government ministers can meet to coordinate their work. At one end of the axis there is a circular development in which other national institutions are located including the post office headquarters and the Egyptian central bank. On the other side of the axis is People Square, which will include the largest flagpole in the world, as well as two open theaters. This square is anchored by a large arc building. The need to have an understanding of, right, how can we enable renewable energy? How can we make the right choices as we build and develop? so that we can continue to use things over and over and over. And we've got some answers closer to, to home than we realize. So here I have Ahmed Zaran, whose children go to BISC. And um, we have Malik and Tamim, Tamim in 3B and Malik in 5S. And Ahmed is the CEO of Calm Solar. And what he has done is as it says there in the caption, sun powered, communities empowered. So he's enabled us to achieve goal seven of the sustainable development goals or global goals and working towards that affordable and renewable energy um, of goal seven. So here we have the sun being used as energy. The sun is something that comes up every day. The sun will always be there. Hello children, my name is Ahmed Zahran and I'm going to talk to you today about sustainability. Um, I wish we had had the chance of having this conversation face to face, but, but because of what hap what's happening with COVID, I'm recording this message to you. But I hope that one day we would be able to have that conversation face to face so I could take your questions. Also, in the future, I would be very happy to arrange for you to visit uh, some of the solar stations that we have so you could get a better sense of what sustainability is. So what is sustainability? Let us put it in a simple way. When we look at our planet, planet Earth, we will find that some things are finite and some other things are infinite. So what are the finite things? Those are the things that we can run out of. And what are the infinite things? Those are the things that we are, will keep on having as long as planet Earth is there and as long as it is completing its rotations around the sun. So what are the finite things that we have on our planet? It's those resources that will, we will eventually run out of. And those include, for example, the gas that we use for our cars that provides us with the energy that we use to move from one place to another. It also provides the energy that we use to heat our houses or to produce electricity that runs our air conditioning. So what do we do with the finite resources that we have on the planet? We try and use them wisely so that we don't run out of them very quickly. But one thing for certain is going to happen that we will eventually run out of them. So what do we do in order to get around that and to make sure that our houses will keep uh, heated or air conditioned, our cars will keep running and our life in general and our industry will keep on running with no disruption. We use sustainability or to be more precise, we adopt sustainability. So what is the meaning of sustainability? Sustainability means the shift from using the finite resources of our planet to using the infinite resources that that planet has as well. What are those infinite resources that we are talking about? The first thing that happens every morning is the sunrise. So the sun spends, uh, you know, depending on where you are on the planet, 
somewhere between 8 and 20 hours every day shining on some parts of our planet. What does the sun give us? It gives us light and it gives us heat. It is that heat and that light that provides energy for our plants to grow, that provides us with the warmth that enables us to basically exist on this planet and move freely without you know, freezing uh, um, and not being able to move or without overheating and not being able to do anything outdoors. So it's the sun is the reason behind our existence today. And we try, instead of using the oil that we extract from the earth, which is a finite resource, uh, upon which all of our industry and mobility and heating and air conditioning is based, we try to stop using that and to start using the sun. But how is that? The sun, as I told you, provides us with two forms of energy, light and heat. Modern technology was able to change that light and that heat into another form of energy, which is electricity. And that electricity is what we use to run our houses, our industry, and our mobility. Just like the sun, there are other resources that we can use. For example, wind energy. The wind blows every day, and it will keep on blowing as long as we exist. Why is that? The wind blows from between places with a different atmospheric pressure. So when the wind blows, when we put windmills in its way, it's going to blow through those windmills, and those windmills are going to move. And we use that energy, that movement energy of the windmill, which is called kinetic energy, again, to produce electricity using turbines. And it is that electricity that we use to run our houses and to run our industry and mobility and so on. The same thing with something called hydropower, which means using the movement of water. Water moves in rivers. It moves from places that are high to places that are lower in height. So that difference means that the water is going to slide between areas of high altitude to areas of lower altitude. And this is exactly what we uh, use to produce electricity again. We put turbines in the way of the water. And it is that movement of the water that moves the turbines. And those turbines produce the electricity that we use. So we try and shift from using finite resources to using infinite resources. And that's the whole idea of sustainability. So it is not enough to be efficient. It's not enough to make good use of electricity, but it is also enough to change the source of that electricity. At the same time, humans are currently changing the modes that you use, they use for mobility, for example, to be more sustainable. So instead of using cars that use internal combustion engines, which are the cars for which you have to pump fuel in order for them to run to electric vehicles. Electric vehicles, they have batteries and run on electricity they can, so they can be charged directly by electricity. So it is those types of innovations that humans are trying to come up with to become more sustainable. So right now there is a big transition that is happening and we're very lucky to be living during that time of transition because there is a lot of technologies that we get exposed to a lot of new ideas, a lot of initiatives, a lot of things are going on. And this gives us a chance to be exposed to them, to see the wonders of the human brain and what humanity is able to invent and what is humanity is able to, to come up with in order to be more sustainable. So our goal, and when you grow up, what you will see is that we will become more and more sustainable every day. Egypt will be hosting this year in 2022 at the end of the year, in November 2022, the biggest conference on sustainability that the United Nations is organizing. It's called COP27. COP stands for Conference of Parties. And it's a big conference of all the countries of the world. And they get together to find out ways and ideas to make humanity more sustainable. We are very lucky as a country that this is going to happen in Egypt, in Sharm el-Sheikh. And thus, there are a lot of initiatives that are happening to help Egypt be prepared for that. I hope you would have the chance to research more about it. I hope that one day I'll get to be with you in the classroom 
and to attend your assembly to be able to answer your questions face to face. But for now, I hope you got something out of this video. And until we meet, I wish you a pleasant day and a pleasant year ahead of you. Thank you. Right, well, who else is getting Carl? Oh, well, uh, let's see. We've got Cameron, Casey, Cassie, Carol, Carrie. Oh, gee, that's a lot of kids on the naughty list. Oh, no, they're not on the naughty list. What? Well, then why are they getting Carl? Uh, because it's a reliable and affordable source of energy. I mean, what better gift to receive than Carl? <laughs> well, yeah, that's true, but I don't think people want it as a gift. Well, it's in all the papers. It's the must-have item this silly season. Everyone loves Carl. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's what people are saying. Sources of carbon emissions. Coal. And coal is down. The coal industry. Yep, everyone's talking about coal. So, what is it and why is it so controversial? Let's start with the what. Coal is a naturally occurring rock that can be found around the world. It comes from underground and it's old, like really old. In fact, coal takes millions of years to form. It's made from the remains of living things, which are full of carbon. When that carbon has been squashed and heated over millions of years, it turns into coal. And thousands of years ago, humans discovered it burned really well. The ancient Greeks and Romans used it to forge metal. The Aztecs and ancient Chinese used it as fuel and some of Australia's indigenous peoples burned it for heat. But coal really took off in the 1700s with the Industrial Revolution and the demand to power new machines, like the steam engine, and then electric power plants. Here in Australia, coal was first discovered by settlers in 1797 at Coal Cliff just north of Wollongong. Huh, that's probably why it's called Coal Cliff. Anyway, Turned out Australia had a lot of it. I'm talking millions and millions of tonnes of the stuff right under our toes. That quickly led to mines being set up around the country and entire towns being built around them. And pretty soon, Australia was exporting several million tonnes of the stuff to other countries. Today, coal supplies about a third of the world's electricity and Australia still exports a lot of it. But it looks like the popularity of coal is fading. No for the bank. Wait, what? Protests? Oh. See, I told you, not everyone loves coal. Oh, but it's so combustible and sooty. Yeah, but it's also really bad for the environment. When burned, it releases greenhouse gases. Yep, coal is a fossil fuel. And when you burn it, it releases a lot of carbon dioxide. That's one of the main greenhouse gases contributing to climate change. And at the recent COP26, countries agreed to phase down the use of coal for the first time. It is beyond question that Glasgow has sounded the death knell for coal power. Some countries were hoping it would be phased out completely. But others, including India and China, said their people still need coal as a reliable and cheap source of fuel. And Australia's PM, Scott Morrison, says it can still have a future. For all of those who are working in that industry in Australia, they'll continue to be working in that industry for decades to come. Mr Morrison says the coal industry provides thousands of jobs and is a big contributor to our national economy. So the plan is to reduce it, but over a longer period of time. And in the meantime, work on new technologies to make coal a cleaner source of energy. But many people reckon there are already greener options out there and that the planet can't afford to delay ditching coal. Oh, well, what are we going to do with all this coal now? Um, put it back and give the kids something they actually want? Oh, well, that's a good idea, I suppose. So, as we saw, it's a major problem if uh, coal, for example, which is one form of fuel, fossil fuel that uh, we use for energy at the, at the moment and have a lot in the past, it's a problem if we are going to limit how much that is used for the environment. 
what people need is another form of energy that is also that's renewable but is also cost effective quite affordable so the governments have to make decisions and as we see with the balance between society and economy and money and also the climate and environment decisions have to be made and as we'll see here it has effects and this is how people are trying to manage this situation Energy Minister Angus Taylor warns the early closure of Victoria's Yallon coal-fired power plant could lead to higher bills and more blackouts. Energy Australia announced it would close the Latrobe Valley plant four years earlier than expected in mid-2028. It supplies up to 22% of the state's electricity and 8% of the national market. The plant's closure will leave a gap in generation capacity of more than 1,000 megawatts. A 350-megawatt battery will be built as a partial replacement, but the federal government says it will step in if the company doesn't fill the void. The point I would make is there must be a replacement with dispatchable capacity. We need to make sure that we have the affordability and reliability we need for all the households, small businesses around Victoria, but of course the heavy industry. I mean, Victoria has been a manufacturing centre for this nation for a long, long time, and it's critical that it has access to affordable, reliable. Hello, I'm Amelia Mosley. Welcome to our BTN special on the environment and sustainability. Here's what's coming up. A school that's getting down and dirty with wormwee, saving seeds for the future, and could insects be the food of the future? You'll find out soon. But first up, we're going to meet some primary school kids who were worried about the amount of waste being produced in their school. So they came up with a plan and have made some pretty big changes. Check it out. These kids are visiting local cafes trying to negotiate a discount. Hello. Uh, hello. We're from North Adelaide Primary School and we were wondering... But not for their own purchases. Yeah. They're hoping to get the owners to offer customers a discount if they bring in their own reusable cup, rather than asking for a throwaway one. Because those are not recyclable, because they have a small amount of plastic in them. <laughs> Australia used to be one of the best countries in the world when it came to waste. But more recently, we haven't been doing so well. In fact, Australia is now one of the biggest producers of trash in the world, with 41 million tonnes of rubbish created every year. And half of that goes to landfill, where it can't be recycled. <laughs> So these kids came up with a plan to start their own war on waste. 20 cent discount on your coffee. Their first idea was to sell reusable coffee cups after seeing the damage throwaway ones due to the environment, as well as asking local cafes to offer a discount to customers who bring in their own cup. But the class are also doing a lot more things and they've invited me back to the school to take a look. First, I'm going to take you to our SLC We were shocked by the amount of plastic bags and coffee cups that weren't being put into recycling and that weren't actually able to be recycled. So we as the SRC thought we'd do something about it. So we bought some of these calico bags and reusable bags and keep cups that we could use again. We think these bags will help eliminate plastic because plastic bags take years and years to break down into the environment. These are keep cups, so you can take them and have your coffee in them because the takeaway cups that the takeaway cups that you usually buy at the cafe, they're not recyclable. They they're plastic, so we got these to help as well. And um, Kasha, you said that you guys are having a nude food week, so tell me about that. Um, a nude food week is where you don't have any plastic wrappers. Like, if you want a yogurt, you don't buy it in like one of those small squeezy packets. You get a big yogurt tub and you put them in small Tupperware containers. And hopefully that will reduce the amount of plastic and waste at our school. 
They're also looking to try some other ideas too. Oh, we're in talks with the council to get some co compost bins so we can put our food scraps in there. Uh, so to stop food scraps from just going into landfill. They hope their ideas will encourage more people to reuse and recycle. <laughs> to keep the environment clean for all kids to enjoy in the future. Wake up and smell the coffee. Recycle! Next up, we're going to a school that's found an unusual way to raise money. At Lemonade Stands, they've decided to sell worm wee. And while that might sound, well, pretty gross, we found out that it's actually super useful. Take a look. These kids have all got worms. Go on, show them. And these little wrigglers are their squirmy, slimy class pets. I like seeing the worms um, and when, on Wednesdays I like going over there opening it up and seeing the worms and whenever we put new worms in or make a new one we always name the worms when we go in. You're probably pretty familiar with worms, but what you might not know is that there are more than 6,000 species of worm worldwide. The most common ones are about 10 to 15 centimetres long, but one Aussie species grows up to three metres. Yuck. Luckily, these are your average, garden variety, not terrifyingly huge, earthworms. And it's the job of these guys to keep them happy. We give them the fruit scraps from each classes, so we've got to just look inside before. So we want to make sure there's no meat, there's no citrus, there's no onions, just checking through and make sure there's no absolutely no plastic. And um, with our challenge that we're doing, we would like to do um, to make sure that there, if there's any whole fruit, that will not go in, so we just put it in our compost. Worms are nature's recyclers. As a worm moves through the soil, they like to eat a lot. And some species eat their entire body weight every day, munching through everything from kitchen scraps to dead leaves and branches. And what happens to all of their food? Once they finish um, eating the food, they'll make the worm juice. Mmm, yeah. Um, well, worm juice is made out of pee and poo from the worms. Ugh. Ugh. Mm, no. What the worms do is that they eat it and then when they do their business, that's where the compost comes out. While it might sound disgusting, the worm wee is full of nutrients, something that plants find delicious. And for these kids, it is money in the bank. We sell these community at the school, so like the parents, if they're picking up kids from the school or even before school or after assemblies. And while some of the profits go back into the garden, the rest goes to a worthy cause. I think 51% of our profits go to the Australian Conservation Foundation to help save the oceans, because we're really passionate about that. So the humble worm is more useful than I first thought. And now I know that I can use we to get rich, I might get worms too. We for sale! So what do we do that promotes the SDGs, the global goals? We're part of the world's largest lesson. Um, we understand the sustainable development goals. And we also have to unite with children around the world, do our bit for the future. So we saw some good examples there of what children were doing in primary schools in key stage two. So we have to play our part by becoming goalkeepers. We have to advocate, implement, put into practice, and champion the global goals. Hello, my name is Malala and I'm from Pakistan. We have a very urgent mission to complete by 2030 and you can help us. Together, we must fight inequality, end extreme poverty and respect our planet. I'm determined to do this. Are you? Excuse me. Hello? 
Have you got a minute? But this is important. We need your help. Imagine you're traveling in space. You're looking for intelligent life. You've been traveling for a while because space is very sp spacious. You've already spotted millions of planets with no life at all, lots of acid, lava, that sort of thing. But nowhere you'd go for your holidays. And then you see it. Earth. A tiny island in space. A little speck of water, rock and soil with a thin veil of air that we can breathe. There might be life out there in space, but here on Earth, it's everywhere. On the land, in the water, in the air. Plants, insects, birds, fish, and every type of living creature. Some beautiful, some, frankly, a, a bit weird. And people, billions of people like you and me. You know, beautiful, reasonably intelligent life. Well, just saying. In most ways, we're just like the rest of life on Earth. We start from tiny seeds, and with the right conditions, we grow and mature. To do that, we all need the same basic things. No, oh, not mobile phones, trainers and Facebook, but fresh water, clean air, and healthy food. Without those, we don't last long, no matter how smart our phones are. The good news is that Earth has enough for all of us. The bad news is we've got some serious problems in our way. The first is climate change. The way we're living on Earth now is damaging the very things we need to live. The fuels we burn are choking the atmosphere with gases we can't breathe. We're running out of clean drinking water, but some of us waste it on things that we don't need. And all of this is changing the weather, and that's not even the half of it. The second problem is inequality. Some people on Earth have far more than they need, and most people don't have nearly enough. Many live in terrible poverty. It's just not right. Millions of people are unable to get medicines or healthcare that could stop them from getting sick or cure them if they do. In some places, children complain about having to go to school. In others, millions of children can't go to school at all. Is that fair? The thing is, we're causing these problems. So we can fix them too, if we all work together and get creative. Let me explain. If you think about it, all living things have superpowers. Birds can fly. We can't. Dogs can smell things we can't, which is not always a bad thing. Plants absorb gas that we can't breathe and turn it into air that we can. But human beings have a power that other creatures don't. We are the most creative creatures ever. Our heads are full of ideas and we're great at making things too. And with that power, we've already changed the world over and over and solved thousands of problems. So now we can do it again. The good news is we have a plan plan that can only succeed with your help. There is one organisation in the world that represents the people of 193 countries, and it's entirely dedicated to keeping us peaceful and working together. You may have heard of it, the United Nations. They have just announced the Global Goals for Sustainable Development. These are 17 goals to protect the planet against climate change and make the world safer, fairer and more just for everyone. We have to achieve these goals by 2030. The great thing about a plan is that we can check how we're doing as we go along, give ourselves a pat on the back if we do well, and try harder if not. 2030 isn't so far away, so we need to start right now. There's a lot we can do if we work together and get really creative. We can start by making these goals famous. So find out what they are and tell everyone, and ask everyone to tell everyone else. Then, and this is the exciting bit. See if there's something practical you can do to actually help. If we don't waste food, water or electricity, that would help protect the planet. If we all stick up for people who aren't being treated fairly and respect each other's human rights, that would make a big difference too. There are 17 goals altogether. So lots of different ways in which you can help. We also need some new ideas and new ways of doing things. What if being a girl or a boy made no difference to how safe you feel, the friends you have, or the places you could go? What if we found new ways to make water clean and drinkable? What if we could recycle all of our waste? What else do you think we could do? 
We all live on Earth, and we depend on the Earth to live. We have so many different cultures, but we only have one planet. If we take care of it and each other, and share what we produce fairly and sustainably, everything we need is right here. Someday, we may find intelligent life on other planets. In the meantime, let's see how intelligent we can make it down here for all of us, at home, on Earth. I'm just saying.